Welcome back to the channel. And if you're a beginner in Blender and you wanna understand how bones work, this is gonna be the simplest video you can possibly watch because we're gonna be just adding in some very basic bones to a cylindrical object. And I'm gonna be explaining things like the basics of the bone relationships, the basics of extruding, moving the bones, how we add the actual influence so the bones can deform a piece of mesh. It will even set up a little animation. We'll look quickly at some of the different bone types and um, just some of the absolute basics. So this is what I call like a scratching the surface kind of video. This is not gonna teach you everything. This is just scratching the surface, but it'll really introduce you to the core concepts of bones in Blender if you're a beginner. And it'll really just take the complication out of it because there's so many videos out there that just get way too into the details right up front and it just confuses people. So I wanted to make a video that genuinely assumes that you know nothing about bones. You're just a beginner in Blender and you just can't get it, and you just want one video that shows you step-by-step step and doesn't make it complicated. So that's what this video is gonna be about. We're gonna just open a fresh scene. You don't need any plugins or external tools. So let's jump in, and I hope you enjoy. So with a new scene open up in Blender, go ahead and select the default objects by dragging over them and just press delete. And we're gonna add in a very simple cylindrical object that will be just perfect for demonstrating how to use the bones. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go into our front of graphic view. I'm just pressing one on my number pad. And you're gonna go shift A, then under your mesh options, just go to the drop down and select the cylinder. And you can come here to the add cylinder properties here. And let's just take the radius and decrease it a little bit. Um, let's go with something like that. Just kind of like a narrowish kind of tube, maybe a little bit bigger. There we go, that's perfect. And then just drop this down. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into edit mode. You can also just press the tab key to go into edit mode. And you can see here, if we were to add bones inside of here, imagine kind of like a spine in a human going all the little vertebrae going up, right? Um, if we were to add it and then weight it to this object here, it's not gonna really do anything because we don't have any geometry here to deform this. So it's always important that whatever you're gonna be deforming has a lot of um, geometry so it can actually fold because at the moment these are just um, if you look here these are just a whole bunch of long individual faces right so what you can do is you can just simply hover over it in the middle and go control R or command R and you should see a yellow line appear right and then you could roll your middle mouse button so I'm gonna roll my middle mouse button until I see a whole bunch of segments so essentially everywhere where there's a line here it's gonna be an area where this can kind of bend and deform. So I'm gonna roll in and I'm just gonna double click to add it in. And now you can see we have a whole bunch of um, geometry. Another thing I'm gonna do, and I think this just looks a little bit better, is you can just go over to your face select option up here, click on the top face, and then holding in shift, you can select the bottom face at the same time. And then you can press control B or command B, and that will now allow you to move your mouse. And you can see you can add a bevel in this case, I'm gonna give it a bevel like this. I'm gonna roll the middle mouse button up once and then double click and that just adds in a bevel. How cool is that? Now we have this object here that we can um, deform. So let's now, while we're, I think, actually we'll do it this way. We're gonna go into object mode. We have this object selected. We'll right click and go shade smooth. And then we're gonna go G and Z, and in the front view, we're just moving it up and just putting it on this red line, which is the red axis line. And if you move into perspective, you can see it looks like it's sitting on the floor. So now we have it ready to go. So let's go Shift A. Let's go over to our armature option and add in a single bone. Now you can go Z and you can go into wireframe, or if you're just in solid view, you can also just come up here and toggle on the X-ray. That way you can also see the bone. But what I prefer to do, and what's generally the most widely accepted convention when it comes to this, if you can call it that, is to simply um, go with this bone selected. And if you're struggling to select it, let's say for example, you accidentally deselected it and it's stuck in there and you struggle to select it, just come up here and just click on armature. And now you can see if you go Z, go wireframe, that is active. But what I'm saying here anyway, is we wanna select that we want to go over to our object data properties for the bone, which is a little green dude down here. And then you want to go over to your viewport display dropdown. And you want to go to display as. And you want to go over and enable in front. 
That just means it doesn't matter what is in front of your bone. If I were to add in another object here, like a cube, and kind of go behind that, I'm always gonna see that bone over there and be able to select it, okay? So now I'm gonna select the bone. And what we're gonna do is with the bone, just like we do with a piece of geometry, we wanna go in to edit mode. And over here, we can do things like grab either the top part of the handle or the bottom nub here. And that allows us to move the bone. We can also just click in the middle to select the whole bone, in which case we can press R to rotate, G to move, S to scale, okay? But the thing here is, is we can also extrude. So if we were to select the tip of this bone here and go E to extrude, we can press E, we can see we extrude out another bone. Now, what I'm gonna ask you to do here is don't follow along with this bit here. I'm just gonna show you so you understand, okay? So I've just extruded this bone here by pressing E. So I went E to extrude, okay? And that means now, if I were to go over into this option up here and go into pose mode, Pose mode is the area now where I can actually manipulate the bones for animation, but it's not actually editing the bones. If I were to come in here into pose mode and select this top bone and go R to rotate, and then I went back into edit mode, you can see this is where it actually is, where it was, because in the pose mode, this bone is simply just um, kind of like holding a position that we told it to hold, right? So this is handy if you wanna animate. If I were to now actually move this around in pose mode, I could always take it and go Alt followed by an action. So I've rotated it. So I can go Alt and then followed by R to reset the rotation. So now with that done, if I go back into edit mode, I can see that matches again, okay? So just keep that in mind. Pose mode is gonna be where you move these bones around. I'll also just quickly mention in pose mode, you can see here, I select this bone here. If I rotate this bone, the one at the top goes along with. And this is because bones work with what's called a hierarchy, okay? So this was the one that was originally in here. Then this bone got extruded out, which means it is now connected to this bone, right? So what you'd have to do, and I'll quickly demonstrate. Once again, this is just so you understand. If I were to extrude this a few more times in edit mode, and I went back into pose mode, you can see here, if I rotate this bone here, they all go along. So if I wanted to kind of rotate animate this, I would have to kind of like maybe whipping up, I'd have to grab this one and rotate it, then grab this one and rotate it, and then work my way through like this. However, that is how like old school armature animation used to work. But what we do these days is we use IK, or inverse kinematics. So you would actually add a control object to one of these bones and the IK chain would control down. So you'd only have to grab one bone and all the other bones would dynamically move. Now that is a more advanced thing. That's not what we're gonna be covering today. So for now, I'm just gonna just grab all of these. I'm gonna go Alt R to reset them. And I'm gonna go back in to edit mode. I just wanted to kind of give a basic idea of what's going on here. But the main thing we wanna focus on is back in edit mode, I'll just get rid of all these bones I extruded by deleting them. You should have just your armature that you've added in here. And there are two ways we can make a chain going up. We can either select this nub over here and go G, Z and move it up to the top. And then select our bone. We could right click and click on subdivide. Then under our subdivide tab, we can come here and increase the segments. That is one way you can do it. Another way you can do it, and I'm just gonna go back, is just to move this down and then extrude up like so, and then go Shift R just to repeat that action to the top. But I think the better way in this case is just to move this nub to the top, and then just to select the bone and to right click and go subdivide. In this specific situation, that works well. Okay, so I'm gonna maybe subdivide it four times. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into object mode. So now what we wanna do in object mode, we wanna take a piece of mesh and we wanna be able to tell Blender that whenever we move these bones, each bone has a specific amount of influence on a piece of mesh, making it move along. So the simplest way to do this automatically in Blender is to select a piece of mesh that you wanna deform. You can hold in shift and then secondarily, you're gonna select the armature itself. And then you're gonna go control P or command P and you're gonna go with the automatic weights option here. Now Blender's automatically gone ahead and weighted this. And to be able to see this, you can actually select the armature, 
holding and shift select the mesh and then go over here to object mode and then go into white paint. And now if you hold in alt and you left click, you should be able to click on these bones. Now I think if it's an older version of Blender, you might have to hold in control and then do it. But I think in Blender 4.3 and onwards, you have to hold in alt and then left click. And you can see if you click on these bones, wherever you see this coloration, the warmer values are more influence and the cooler values are less influence. So in this case, if I go alt and left click on the bottom bone, it's red orangey at the bottom. That means it has the most influence. And as it starts working its way to the top, that influence diminishes. And the same is for the top one. So if I go alt, left click and click on this one, you can see it has influence. This one does, this one does, and this one. Now by default, this is now weight painted. So if I Alt and left click on this bone at the top, I can rotate it. And you can see the influence is actually pretty good. The default with automatic weights does a pretty good job in most cases, especially with simple objects like a cylinder. Um, so I'm gonna go Alt, left click on this one. You can see I can rotate that and the influence is just right here. Now in this case, like I said, it's no need to really edit these weights, but in some situations that are not as ideal as a perfect cylinder, like for example, a face or a more complicated object, you could always come in here by clicking, going Alt, left clicking, and then you can come over here and you can grab these tools up here like your brush and you can influence the weight. So I can come in here and paint more influence. So the warmer the values are, the more influence. If I rotate now, you can see that's a lot stiffer there. It's not as much bending. Um, but in this case, like I said, that's just the way I'm gonna leave it. So there you go, that is the basics. I'm gonna go back into object mode. I'm gonna go and select my armature. And I'll quickly show you how to animate this. If you wanna just quickly go into pose mode with the armature, you can come over to your timeline and let's say we come to frame one. And in frame one, we'll select all of these bones and we'll press I and that'll insert a keyframe. You can see it's yellow now. And let's go to frame 30 and on frame 30, let's enable the auto king and uh, let's just come and maybe grab this guy, rotate this guy, and then grab this guy and press R as well. Let's just rotate them all slightly. There we go. And then let's select everything. Press I just to insert a keyframe. And then with them all active, just select the first keyframe and go Shift D to duplicate and drag it to 60, like so. And let's just make this animation 60 frames long, like that. So now we have it bending like this. Okay, so now you kind of understand how this works. I can also quickly show you with this, let's just go back into object mode. This is the just the sort of default bone, but if you actually select the armature, you can go over to your object data properties. This is the octahedral bone, but you can actually go to the display as and change it to B bone, which means bendy bone. And that gives you the ability then to select the bones themselves. And you can go into edit mode and then select each bone and you should be able to go over to your bone properties, go to bendy bones in edit mode and then give each one of these guys their own segment. So I might give three segments here, do the same here. I'll, I'll just quickly check. I think you should be able to hold in shift and select them all at the same time. And then if you hold in alt, you should be able to come over here and click and it'll do it to all of them at the same time. But now if we go over into our object mode, you can now see this bend is a lot smoother, like that. There we go. So that is the power of bones in Blender. I hope this has been a satisfactory introduction for beginners and how bones work. By no means did we cover everything, this is just scratching the surface. But if you enjoyed this, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.